Hey, good morning, brothers and sisters. Um, you know, sending you all holy kisses and holy hugs because if you're serving the Lord um, for real, you need it. And if you're not and you're still a lost sheep, you need it. And the majority of our people that know that we're true Israelites are still lost sheep. And the danger is not realizing that they are whether it's talking about the new testament is false or their doctrine their teaching is something like there's no j in hebrew then never say the word jerusalem never say the word judah never say anything with the word j because it's not in hebrew and then why are you speak it in english anyway if you're so hebrew so by actually understanding the bible this is the 1611 king james version bible this isn't my only bible or other brothers and sisters waking up this is not our only by you know our our own book this is the bible all right so let's let's get in um a very important scripture because there's so much information on the earth and most importantly there's a lot of understanding to derive in the bible and let's get to some of it this is matthew 22 in verse 36 because a lot of people they are lost and they stay lost because they don't know and they're honest about not knowing and then every dim-witted proud person amongst our people have something to say about the bible and the problem is is that by hearing people talk about the bible or referring to books of men about the bible they're actually breaking commandments in the Bible, like Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 12. The verse before the one that says, fear God and keep the commandments, this is the whole duty of man, for this is the whole duty of man. That same precept begins above in verse 12. And it speaks about the making of many books, there is no end, and much studies awareness of the flesh, because if you're studying, that's already trying on your mind. And then if you're studying books of men, the book of Enoch, books that are also not in the Bible and all this other madness, then all you're going to do, like the scriptures say, is wear out your mind. You're going you're gonna to confuse yourself. You're going to bring forth foolishness rather than grow in wisdom and understanding. Like if by just studying the Bible, that's what you'll do. So many of our brothers and sisters don't even know that yet. They want to be teaching the Bible. And as a result, they continue in sin. So let's see by studying the Bible, one of the first things that we should know and will begin to know and confirm. I don't mean know in your own thoughts. I mean know because it's actual knowledge and truth. So this is Matthew 22, verse 36. Good master, it says, excuse me, it says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? So as we read, this is simple. A, master, a man is asking Christ, he calls him master, which was the tradition back in ancient Israel, just like today, the honorable, uh, this person, the, you know, king this, um, priest this, reverend this, Men having titles has always been one of the downfalls of our people. Anyone that talks about God, anyone that talks about Yahuwah, Yahweh, they get their title also. When the true disciples, Christ himself, he always made sure to deflect and push the glory onto the Heavenly Father only. Even though he's obviously worthy of glory and the Most High himself glorified Christ. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him above Moses, above Elijah and the other prophets, because they all spoke of him anyway. So it's not that you're neglecting the prophets. It's that you're actually understanding what they taught by exalting and acknowledging Christ. OK, so. The brother comes up and says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? So what's the, what's the most important of all the commandments? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, 
and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. So the power of this answer, so Christ had so much wisdom that unlike foolish men or the men of ancient Israel, our forefathers, that had their own opinion of what the great commandment was and that was their running conversation, just like whatever running conversations our people have that are still lost. What did the Lord say? He gave them an answer to his question. The most important commandment in the Bible is loving the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. So rather than sit there and ignore that and then talk about, well, Lord, you can't say the word Lord, was Lord means this, and you start quoting men, stay in the Bible only, relax, slow down. When you look at the whole Bible, it constantly shows the diligence and the self-control of actual servants. They have the ability to slow down. They have the ability, even when they're being provoked or when they're being hasted and, haste, hasted and hastened and rushed and everything, they have the wisdom to be able to take a moment to assess what's happening, to not follow Satan in their mind or allow people around them or danger around them and follow their fears. They're, they're able to slow down. That's why when we read in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 11, the Lord also lets us know Study to be quiet, work on, focus, obviously studying the scriptures, but applying the scriptures brings self-control, brings um, discipline in us. And that's the only way by getting our minds right that we're going to be able to serve the Lord and actually love him. Let's hold this. Let's go to 1 John 5 and 3. Because it's funny that the greatest commandment in the Bible, you don't really ever hear that word love. People don't even, people are not, amongst our people don't even say it by accident. When Christ said, by this shall all men know you're my disciples, if you have love one to another. So to be Yahushua's disciples, Yahushua's disciples, those are different Israelite group names or the names that are around our people now that they attribute to Jesus Christ. So instead of following man, or let's pause that for a second. Let's say that's the name you feel that Christ has, because if we were in Israelite groups, that's you're gonna have a name for the Messiah in some dialect of man's Hebrews, period. Some some man Hebrew. All right. What the Lord is showing us is that we have to focus on what he says. Because we just were told that the greatest commandment in the Bible is to love the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind, okay? First John 5 and 3, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. So loving the heavenly Father only occurs when we observe and keep his commandments. So if you're in a, if you come from a Christian belief or if you come from israelite groups that claim that we don't have to keep the laws like the liars in christianity say then what does that mean we're not justified by the law doesn't mean we get to now murder people doesn't mean we get to blaspheme doesn't mean we get to wear idols like crosses or have images of christ around whether they're the false so-called white man's demonic image of christ that's false or a black man which is also an idol. We can't have any man, black or white or any color. Even the true black image, Christ is a black man. We still cannot have a black image of Christ based on Deuteronomy 4, verse 15 and 16 and all the other laws that show us the definitions of idolatry and what not to do in order to not commit idolatry. We can't make images of the Most High. We can't make images of Christ. We can't make images of angels. We can't make images of saints. Or those that, oh, Elijah must be in heaven. Let me make an image of Elijah and start to say that that's holy. No, 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 no. Can't do that. So once we start to actually learn the Bible, that's how by applying the scriptures, we truly begin to love the Lord. Not by going to an Israelite group, not by naming yourself Christian, not by following Christianity or going to church on Sunday or to going to churches on Saturday whether it's Seventh-day Adventist, 
whether it's an Israelite group. That's not how we, we have to love the Lord by doing the commandments. The commandments are found in the Bible, not in what you feel, not in someone that told you commandments. Now they're telling you separately to come to their church. That's now, oh, what commandment is that? What scripture is that? So once they don't show you the scripture, or once they call you a devil or, you know, you're proud or whatever. No, if I'm proud, show me in the Bible what scripture says that i have to be in iuic that i have to be in gocc that i have to be in any of these israelite groups that i have to be in christianity that i have to go to a christian church see you're forsaking the assembling of ourselves no that forsaking the assembling of ourselves are those that actually serve the lord by doing his commandments that's how we love the lord so if you're saying something that's separate from the commandments, simply separate from the Bible, then that's the opposite of loving the Lord. And those are the deceits we have to look out for and avoid as Israelites. So let's continue. So it says, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous because Many of our people, the second you start telling them that you can't, they can't follow Christmas or New Year's or, wait a minute, once they have kids, they're so afraid of making their kids sad or telling their kids something true that they'll literally reject the Lord to be able to please their children and to be in league with the world. I've come across many people like that for many years and not just them just like our people that are in Israelite groups, when you start to show them, hey, you got to stand up against the wickedness that you see. Like, you know, they like the Lord and all, but Satan has them in a way that they not. Nah, nah, I don't want to want to rock the boat. You know, I don't, I don't know about all that. You know, nobody's perfect. You know, you got to have mercy on brothers. Now they start coming with their own demonic scriptures. That's why when we actually start to serve the Lord, we start to see with our minds. We start to understand our mind starts to grow in the Lord. We start to increase in actual understanding and actual wisdom. And the Lord's spirit starts to now abide with our minds and our spirit. Let's continue. So Christ said, thou shalt love the Lord. This is Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. 37. It says, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. So we just read in 1 John 5 and 3 that loving the Lord isn't, I say I love the Lord. I, every day I write a verse for prayer or a psalm and put it on Facebook. That's loving the Lord or calling someone I care about and telling them the Lord loves them, that's loving the Lord. No, we don't get to invent our own definition of how to love the Lord. The definition biblically of loving the Lord is to keep the commandments. Now, what this shows us is that the greatest commandment deals with our minds. Loving the Lord isn't in and of itself a visible action, if you understand what I'm saying. The love will show itself. That's that's not the point that I'm making. It's not building a church. It's not um, going out to street corners and teaching or, or being in an Israelite camp. It's not something that or putting on a garment. Yet what it is, is keeping the commandments that are found throughout the Bible. We're reading about this definition of the commandments in the New Testament. Because Deuteronomy 6 and 5 lets us know to love the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. Yet the problem is, is that whether you have Israel that follows just the Old Testament, Israel that follows just the New Testament, Israel that follows the, the 1611 King James, the Old Testament, Apocrypha, and New Testament, which is what you're supposed to do, the problem remains that they're not worshiping the Most High starting with their mind because how, how your mind is, that's what your actions are going to be. That's what your words are going to be. The abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's why you have Israel still proud. 
still arrogant. Your brother's just starting to learn the scriptures and think they can teach. That's some serious level of arrogance. That's why when we read in 1 Timothy 3 and 4, what did the Lord say? Let's get it. When you look at a term like a bishop, the word bishop, that's, that's a teacher. That's someone that being exercised in serving the Lord and growing and studying diligently for days and months and years, that the Lord, after choosing that man and opening his understanding, then he's able to teach. That's not given to every brother. That's not, oh, I want to be a teacher, so I am a teacher. No, that we all have different gifts. But because there's so much pride still in men that haven't been born again, everybody thinks they're a teacher, including women. Even though the Bible says the woman isn't allowed to teach. In 1 Timothy 2, verse 11 through 15. Also in Ezekiel 34, verse 31, the most high in these last days is gathering the flock of his sheep. He is gathering the remnant and chosen and elect of Israel right now as we speak. Yet what's the problem? That our people that maybe know where these scriptures are, they conveniently remain blind from their pride and say, well, no, I'm a teacher. I'm a woman. I could teach anyway. Look at Deborah. So you're so proud you that clean toilets in 2020, you're going to go compare yourself with Deborah as if because Deborah did something, you can do it too? Really? Deborah wasn't a proud woman. Deborah also, the Lord set up Barak to be a co-judge with her. Did the Lord set up um, Bathsheba to be a co-king or co-judge with uh, King David? No. Was Delilah and Samson, also were they judges together? No. So wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, but with all that getting, get understanding. And why these scriptures are going out is because a lot of our people, the greatest commandment that shows us we must love the Lord starting with our minds, many of our people haven't even began to do that, even though they know we're Israelites, and especially that they can't stop trying to teach the Bible. Yet they sin constantly and pour out abomination constantly because they're not actually doing the word. That's why we can't be like that, brothers and sisters. Even in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation that our people continue to be, we have to still apply love with our brothers and sisters. And by loving the most high, most of all, we're going to apply the scriptures and what? Obey what he says, not what other people say, not what men in Israel say, and definitely not what Israelite churches or Israelite groups say. You're going to stay in the Bible only. Always. Not until they prove to you that we're Israelites and now, now you're in an Israelite group. No. You're going to always be on top saying, you're going to be on top of them saying, look, what scripture is that? Where in the Bible does it say that? Because your focus is to love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind. OK, so now let's get back. And it says, um, let's finish up with uh, Matthew 22. So it says. This is the first and great commandment. So the greatest commandment in the Bible, the most important commandment you need to focus on is what? Loving the Lord with all your heart, soul and mind. But Christ isn't finished. Let's read on. It says, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So we have to love the children of our people like we love ourselves, which means we also have to apply the commandments with the children of our people. We'll get that next. It says on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So the summary of the entire Bible is loving the most high with all our heart, soul, and mind and loving our neighbors ourselves. But realize again the power, the importance of having your mind right. Because a lot of our people, they, the, the furthest thing from their conversation, especially in Israel, sadly, when I say in Israel, the ones of us that know that we're Israelites, sadly, our people, that's the last thing they talk about. They're talking about the white man. They're talking about how wicked our women are. 
You got sisters trying to teach against men. You got all kind of madness going on amongst our people, which is the opposite of love. Forget the white man. Talk about our people. Talk about how we show evil within our own households, within our own families, within our own communities. That has nothing to do with the white man. Yeah, oh, he, he, when, when we show, when we do evil, he's there to help us, no doubt about it. He's there to give the drugs so we can have alternatives to working hard and making honest wages. He's definitely got the many demonic and wicked ways to cause us to fall. But we have to look to the Lord and actually do the Bible. Let's get um, Ecclesiastes again. This is the 1611 King James Version Bible. You will not find the book of Ecclesiastes because it's been removed out of the King James Version Bible intentionally and on purpose. So that's why, fam, you want to make sure that as you're learning and growing, be diligent. Stay in the Bible. Stop following God how you want to. Follow him based on what the Bible says. Start learning about Christ. When you read in Matthews 11, verse 29, verse 28 also has a commandment that says, come on to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Christ commands us to come to him because we're worn out. Victims of child molestation, victims of rape, victims of being lost and destroyed, victims being behind enemy lines under the white man, the so-called white man, Edomites, for our sins. Having our own people hate us and you sleep in the hood, you're going to get robbed or killed. I mean, we we go in the wrong neighborhood. You got our people are in some. The we're on fire constantly. We're being cooked constantly. We're being punished constantly. So we don't have time to play around anymore. That's why the Lord himself lets us know we're being cooked because he says the way of transgressors is hard. In Proverbs 15 and 17, when our people continue to disobey his commandments, they're not walking off into the sunset, whether they're entertainers on TV or the poorest person in the hood with diseases. Our people are suffering. So it's time to really wake up, brothers, um, and stop, stop trying to follow the Lord your own way. Obey him as commanded. So now we're going to go to a simple scripture. This is Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, which is, this is again, the 1611 King James Version Bible, not my own Bible. This is the Bible we're all supposed to be using, not because it's a preference, but because this is the Bible, the book of the Lord, originally translated from the Hebrew and Greek tongues into English. So from the original languages of the Bible, which are Hebrew and Greek, the King James Version, the 1611 King James Version, was translated from those original languages into English. That's it. And it was accurately translated. That's why it's being used. So this is Ecclesiastes 19 and 24. For a lot of you young brothers and young sisters that are learning this word, continue to do so. But this is a fight. So you got to fight the good fight of faith. You got to be diligent. You can't just be studying for one day, take off a month look over scriptures for five minutes, then decide you want to do something else, because that's Satan. The scriptures are life, this world and Satan are death, sin. So Satan is always going to have distractions waiting for you and continually. So you have to be aware of those devices that he uses in your mind. Like it says in 2 Corinthians 2, verse 10 and 11. And what? You can't be ignorant of the things that Satan uses against us. Not only our thoughts, but other people, we have to be more aware. We have to be more alert. We have to slow down the things that we do and the ways that we view the world or how we observe. Because the scriptures will make us be able to do things more correctly and faster. But if you're not on Christ, if you're not learning about Christ like you're commanded, that was a scripture I'd referred to earlier in Matthew 11, 28 and 29. That what we have to come to Christ, which is to come to the Bible, which is Christ, and learn about Christ. Learn about the Bible, but start off learning by reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then go into the precepts that Christ speaks about throughout the Bible and better understand. Oh, he speaks about the time in Mark 2, 23 through 28, that, um, that David got grace. 
Well, let me go read about that. First Samuel chapter 21. Oh, okay. So now you read, you read first Samuel chapter 21 and that's actual history. And then also you still staying in Christ. You finish reading first Samuel 21, what, what Christ was referring to. You go right back and you continue reading in Mark, the second chapter or wherever you were reading. But you stay in the gospel. Why? Because there's so many lies about truth, which is Jesus Christ. In Israel and, and the planet Earth. So you have to correctly learn and verify what is of Christ and what's not. So when you get thoughts in your mind, when it contradicts truth or it contradicts the Bible, you know, up oh, that's Satan. I have to pray those thoughts away or I have to be more alert about them. Rather than stumbling at the Bible because you haven't been born again, you haven't let the Bible's words replace the thoughts and Satan in your mind now. And continuing in that daily process, that daily fight. That's why we have to take the things one day at a time and slow down because there's so many thousands of ways that Satan comes at us. You're not going to be able to deal with all those thoughts. You can't now. A lot of you brothers running for women or trying to, yeah, man, you know, I got to get a wife or, or, or a lot of our women, oh, I need a good man. I need a good man. They're hopping around from Israelite group to Israelite group from man to man, just like they were when they were in the world, hopping from club to club. Now they hopping from Israelite group to Israelite group, Israelite church to Israelite church, Christian church to Christian church, going with different men constantly. Why? Because they still have the devil in them. They still don't follow the Lord yet. They still think studying is a chore. They, Satan, they don't even acknowledge that Satan is the one keeping them from studying or opening the Bible or desiring to study. This isn't a game. The scriptures are life. Satan is going to keep you from life any and every way he can and every way it appears to you. Just like right now, hearing this word, you might get a call from your mom or something like that. Mom, I'll call you back. Taking care of something important. I'll be right with you. You have to know and see the ways that Satan comes at us. So let's read this again. This is Ecclesiastes um, 19 and 24. So let's read this. It says, he that hath small understanding and feareth God. So fear in the Lord and loving the Lord is the exact same thing because it deals with keeping the commandments. Um, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 lets us know what fear in the Lord is. It's the keeping of the commandments, just like loving the Lord is the keeping of the commandments. Okay. So don't stumble at that because a lot of you have so many lies and leaven in your mind from Christianity and also from many Israelite groups that not all of them teach that the commandments are a sin or some madness, yet a lot of them don't have understanding, so they still stumble at the word, period. That's why, again, make sure that he that hath small understanding and fear with God is better than one that hath much wisdom and transgresseth the law of the Most High. So the goal isn't just to accumulate a whole bunch of wisdom, a whole bunch of laws or knowledge of the laws, because why most people, they start reading the Bible from the beginning, like it's some other book, like it's some regular book. It doesn't have commandments to show you to learn of Christ, which is towards the end of the Bible. Christ is the whole Bible. Let's not get it twisted. So you're learning about the law. You're learning about Christ. However, you need to learn how Christ guides us to, to keep the commandments how he gives us the ability to have true judgment when there are several laws in place or several sins in place, how to deal with those matters in righteous judgment. That's why, again, brothers and sisters, make sure that you learn this word humbly. Okay, so we just read Ecclesiastes 19 and 24 to show us that it's more important to, it's more important to learn the Bible and the little bit that you're learning to do it rather than having a whole lot of wisdom and all these books and all this other stuff that you're shown by men to be a priority incorrectly. And then what? You're still breaking the Lord's commandments. You have brothers in street corners teaching about wicked women and teaching about this. Then they have a dragon or a wicked woman at home. And they're not getting their house in order as they are commanded. So now by following men, they're on street corners, not getting their house in order, teaching the Bible. So now they're being hypocrites and sinning against the Lord instead of obediently and humbly going home 
and getting their house in order by sitting still, studying the Bible, applying the scriptures, praying for understanding, and then feeding their wife. And also praying to the Lord, Lord, is this woman from you or did I choose her based on my lust or she was someone that Satan sent to me to cause me to fall? Rather than assuming because she doesn't listen to you because you're proud and foolish and yelling on street corners that she's just a wicked woman. She very well may be because a wicked woman is given and is the portion of a wicked man. In Ecclesiastes 26, verse 23. But the beauty is by slowing down and applying the scriptures, even when we're wrong, or even if we're making mistakes, or even if we unintentionally made a mistake, whether in marriage or anything, the Lord is merciful. The Most High is merciful and will help us. But we have to have that spirit to be able to be taught, to be teachable, to be able to receive correction and instruction in the Bible and by those speaking truth. The problem is, is that our people, by having their mind completely filled with Satan and pride and all manner of sin, instead of loving the Lord with all their heart, soul, and mind, then what? The Bible becomes a stumbling block. The Bible becomes something that when they actually hear this gospel or this word of truth, it becomes something very provoking. It becomes something very angering and aggravating. So that's why by slowing down, brothers and sisters, you're going to notice that you have a lot less to say. You're more going to observe. You're more going to be self-reflective. You're, no, you're more going to examine yourself rather than be quick to speak. Let's get that. Let's get Proverbs 17 real quick. So we have Proverbs 17. So remember that even if you have a little bit of understanding, it's not trying to um, parrot someone that you think has more understanding. Because when you have little understanding, you don't know liars from snakes and wicked men in Israel. You don't know the depths of Satan and how he resides in his wicked servants in Israel. That's why you want to be still kind of separate yourself and just study. Rather than how you in the army of the Lord, you're in, you're in camp, you're doing all these things and you don't even know how to serve the Lord. You don't even know what a false prophet is in the 50 or 500 precepts that show us about false prophets. Enough to even understand them. You don't know anything. By having the humility to realize you don't know anything, that's how you're going to learn. Because you're going to obey our father who gives the inspiration and opens our mind to get wisdom and understanding. You're going to obey him. You're not just going to quote the scripture that says that. So now this is, um, what is it? This is uh, Proverbs 17, verse 27. Because by keeping, by being still, like the Lord commands us, the beauty of slowing down and just studying, that's what's commanded to us. Search the scriptures, John 5, 39. Study to show thyself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. When you start to apply those scriptures and the commandments to truly love the Lord as we're commanded, learn of Christ, who only spoke what the Most High told him to speak, so he didn't come with his own words. So by you obeying the Most High, by following Christ, where he said, learn of me, which is a commandment, come on to me, learn of me, Matthews 11, 28 and 29. Now what? By you studying this Bible only, being diligent, not being prideful, oh, I know everything, I'm studying, I know. No, praying to the Lord for understanding in the name of Christ. Slowing down, staying at home, or if you you have a lot of noise at home or still live with parents or other people, whatever, or you live with roommates and it's all chaotic, the Lord will help you with that. But maybe go to the library, go to a quiet place, go to the park. Hell, go in your car. Put on your jacket, go in your car. Go wherever you can be quiet. You have to realize that the scriptures are our life. Man doesn't live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God doth man live. Deuteronomy 8, verse 3, start to understand the Torah. Start to understand the law, the five books of Moses. Start to understand the Bible. 
from Genesis to Revelation. And by understanding the Bible, you're going to start reading about Christ first. You're going to start reading not at Genesis. You're going to start reading or not at Revelation. You're going to start reading at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay? And you're going to start also realizing the wisdom throughout the Bible. And you're going to crave it. You're going to hunger and thirst after righteousness and this wisdom of the Bible, not books about the Bible. Not trying to retranslate the Bible with a concordance or other books of men. You're going to slow down and actually learn it. So what are the things that you're going to learn? Proverbs 17, 27. He that hath knowledge spareth his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. So when the scriptures speak about us, well, that if we have true understanding, and what? If we have actual knowledge, we're not going to be running our mouth all the time. We're not going to be on Facebook sharing and putting up a bunch of posts. We're not going to be um, dealing with our woman, running your mouth as much or more than she does. You're not going to be foolish. You're going to spare your words because you're going to be thinking before you speak. You're not going to be speaking and saying stuff. You're going to be slowing down in every righteous way possible so that you can learn and then accelerate and become more spiritual and grow and move faster, yet knowing when to slow down and when and how to accelerate, to be quick minded, not quick tongued. Because people now, they're, they're swift to speak. They got a big mouth. They're real quick to say something. Oh, I don't see that. Everybody's real quick to run their mouth. But when you have wisdom, like the Lord said, a wise man holds his peace knowing his time. A wise man might hold on to something for a while, not because they're sneaky, but because they'll know a more appropriate time to say it. They walk in wisdom. So they're going to know how and when to say something. They're not going to hold back but they're gonna know how to say something respectful or how to, when to be firm, when to be merciful and when to be firm and merciful at the same time, when to be raw and come with guns blazing. They're gonna know when and how to do things blamelessly. And that takes time and that's the level that we all have to get on. That's why brethren, make sure that what? And a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. You're gonna have self-control. When you have an excellent spirit, you're not cool with brothers, and then you every white person you see, you're ready to fist fight. And then, quote, surely oppression makes a wise man mad. Yeah, oppression makes a wise man mad. So I have to be aware of my temper or my rage, excuse me, or my wrath, which is an uncontrollable temper. Because if not, the oppression that we face constantly and the lies concerning that oppression are like we're, like, like we're crazy. We imagine racism, it doesn't exist. Oh, and there's reverse racism. So now you're white, you're the sufferer. Now we got all this madness circulating constantly. This soup of filth and lies in America and wherever we're scattered, circulating constantly with America pushing these lies. So what do we have to do? We have to make sure that we have an excellent spirit, that we think before we speak, that we're aware of like that constant frustration, like a person in prison. They're constantly frustrated because at the end of the day, you're in prison. You're caged like an animal. In America, we're caged with lies. We're caged with oppression. We're caged with the Lord's punishments. We're full of the fury of the Lord. The Lord's punishments are upon us. So we're full of anger and frustration and the results of those punishments, which include oppression, which includes black on black crime, includes all the things we suffer. So we must stay still. We must grow in understanding. So in this face of adversity and stress and, and, and violence and suffering and fears and all the things that we suffer and demons in our thoughts and in our bodies and in our children and all, all over the place and in our enemies, all the things that we go through, that we have that ability to still apply the scriptures. Like the Lord said in Titus 2 verse 11 and 12, that we may live soberly and godly in this present world, as wicked and demonic as this world is. Where you have presidents hanging out with pedophiles 
and then they murder the pedophile and that's gonna that's gonna float away like every other lie and thing that happens who cares what about the pedophiles in your family in your home what about your kids have they been molested the foolish men you choose sister single mom has to have those men been weird around your children do you trust them unwisely do you select a man based on what the scriptures say and how God shows us what right from wrong is? Or do you have so much wisdom that because I just said God from some dim-witted Israelite group that you're following, no, oh, he, he don't know the Lord. I, no, you, you got to stay in the Bible. Can't let Satan like have these little foolish triggers that remove you from the scriptures, just like he did to our forefathers that were unwise and came against Christ constantly. You can't have those triggers or those things, those demons in your mind that the second something is said, you either get so offended or your attention now gets diverted. Oh, no, that's a lie. Oh, no, 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 no. you don't know anything. If you knew the Bible, your whole life would be different and you would have just peace and you would be able to derive peace no matter what your situation is. So because you don't have that understanding yet, brothers and sisters, Slow down. Start to learn how to serve the Lord so you can get that peace, which is Christ truly, which is truth, which is the truth. The truth is not just when you found out we were Israelites. The truth is Jesus Christ only because that's all truth. Christ is the truth, the only the truth. So again, make sure you learn these things. And as the scripture showed us, that by having an excellent spirit, we're not going to be continually in turmoil and problems. We're not going to be having our pride speak for us, thinking that we're serving the Lord when we're speaking. Okay, let's continue. This is Proverbs 17, 28. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. So a lot of you brothers and a lot of you sisters that are real quick to speak, let's read this again. Even a fool, even a wicked imbecile. Fool means wicked. So even someone is an imbecile and wicked and dumb and everything negative, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. So when someone has some semblance or some ability to control themselves, to be quiet, to be able to hear, to not just start yelling or start barking like some crazy dog, but to be able to be still and listen. Even if they're a dumb, wicked fool, they're actually in that singular moment displaying characteristics that a truly wise man has or a truly wise woman has. So again, if you always got to run your mouth anytime the Bible is being brought forth or shown, you have something to say, that lets you know you don't have an excellent spirit. You're not walking in true knowledge and true wisdom. You're not applying the Bible. You're not loving the Most High with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Let's continue. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. So as we're reading here, the Lord is showing us that the Most High has shown us in no uncertain terms that having the ability to control your mouth and knowing that there's a time to speak and a time to be silent is necessary because many of our women they don't acknowledge that there's a time to be silent and worse so the men they are linked to or many of the men that are trying to teach the bible today what's the problem they can't listen they can't hear so how are they going to learn a wise man will hear an increase in learning so whether you're a brother or whether you're a sister if you don't have the ability to hear, you will never be able to serve the Lord. You will never have actual knowledge or be a man or a woman of understanding. But definitely, brothers, most of all, you have to teach our women. So you can't afford to be coming up short in this area. Our sisters are doing nothing but coming up short because we're their dads, we're their grandfathers. Absent, dead, even worse if they're around molesting them. And then there's a few that actually are good dads that stay and do what's right by their children. 
but just financially supporting your children isn't just, that's not how you truly nurture and guide your children. There are a lot of rich perverts and wicked people be, so because they put a roof and shelter and clothing on their children and a lot of other separate sins and scar them and do other evil and abuse to them. Is that good? No. So obviously the point being is that it's not just about financial or economic um, comfort. To, that's not the only way that a man supports his house or his family. You have to bring them up in the admonition and fear of the Lord when we read in um, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. Now let's continue. So now let's go back to uh, Matthews because, again, this is the basics, but the milk of the scriptures, what people still don't understand in Israel a lot of times, our brothers and sisters in Israel, the so-called blacks, the so-called indigenous people of the Americas and the Caribbean and our scattered brethren, what many of our people, Israel, don't understand is that we have to do the Bible. We have to do the commandments. Yes, we don't sacrifice animals anymore because Christ was the final perfect sacrifice. He was the lamb of the most high. So we don't have to sacrifice animals anymore. Yet we still have to keep the commandments. So yes, some commandments were fulfilled by Christ, not all the commandments. Christ didn't fulfill the commandment on idolatry, brothers and people wearing crosses or brothers wearing star of David or shields of David. Christ didn't fulfill the commandment that we can now commit idolatry. So again, that's why it's important to have true understanding. Okay. Um, an idol is something physical that we take and associate with the worship of the most high. So if I have a star of David or a shield of David earring or a shield of David, uh, you know, chain or, um, you know, some, uh, let's say I had a shield of David, you know, on, on my, on my shoulder or something like that, or on my back you know, I sewed it in there, put it in there. Then now a lot of people like, oh, that's cool. No, that's, that's an, that's idolatry. That's a hexagram. So a lot of our people, they don't even know, they don't even know a little understanding because a little understanding lets us know that, Hey, anybody that doesn't have a beard, that's a man that can grow a beard and yet is trying to teach the Bible with a shaved beard or a goatee or something like a lot of our people do. That's a false prophet. That's someone that doesn't have any understanding. Another thing you have amongst our people is what? This whole style now to have a beard and a shaved head. Like complete baldness on their head because they're either losing hair or they just want to fit in with Muslims or they just see uh, Rick Ross do it or something like that. Like our people are so lost and destroyed that's that's the way it's going to be. It's always been that way, and it's going to be that way until Christ comes and brings judgment on the ones of our people that won't wake up. But some of our people will wake up. That's why the Lord is calling our people now through his true servants. The very, very few of us. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. That's why you have to be a true servant. Stop focusing and trying to teach people. You have to confirm that you're serving the Lord first because the price to pay is too high. You don't want to find out the hard way that you're doing things wrong. And a lot of our people are so stubborn. They continually like finding it out that way. Doesn't make sense, brothers and sisters. The Most High gives us a lot of wisdom in the Bible. You cannot be a homosexual. You cannot be a lesbian. You can't be bisexual. Not by my opinion. Second Peters 2, verse 5 through 8. You're what? Breaking the Lord's commandments. All the way at the beginning, during the time of Sodom and Gomorrah, during the time of Lot, during the time of Abraham, Sodom and Gomorrah existed. It was five cities. It was like New York City, five major cities in one. New York City's five major cities in one. Um, Sodom and Gomorrah, five major cities in one. So, and what do they have? Homosexuality? Now you can't even speak against, this, this world has so much, the homosexuals have so much power in this world, they surpassed our people who were in slavery for centuries and remained in captivity 
they surpassed us where you can still speak evil against us. You can still be a white supremacist and no problem. You can't say anything against homosexuals now, but that's this wicked world. Homosexuality is wicked. It's an abomination. And many of our people, because there's so much homosexuality rampant amongst our people, not only those that are sitting guys in dresses and wearing high heel shoes and lipstick, not only talking about that, a woman trying to be men, not only talking about those homosexuals, but the ones that the grandfathers, the fathers, the uncles, the older cousins molesting their younger cousins and, bro and, and instead of looking out for their younger male brothers and sisters, and especially the male brothers, they're what? Messing up their minds. So those of us that are learning these scriptures or went through all kind of madness, we have to start to heal ourselves. We have to start to actually learn these scriptures rather than being all wounded and jacked up. Now you're trying to heal someone. Are people trying to teach that don't know the Bible yet is the equivalent of someone that just got shot nine times and he's bleeding out in the street and he's going trying to tell a person, hey, yo, that homeless dude don't have a shoe on. Yo, let me get him my sneaker. That, that wouldn't make sense. The gesture is nice, but it's foolish. The person's arm is dangling because they were shot three times in the arm. So they're, they're, their bone is showing, it's broken. Their elbow is dislocated. They're all jacked up. They, they need help. They're going to die. But our people, they don't think like that. In that example, it's obvious. No, that person better get to the hospital. They better get a doctor, better get a help. They, they, they need all the help they can get. They ain't in no position to help anybody. Very true. But sadly, you have a lot of our women, single moms with three, five kids and all that. They have a trillion things they need to learn. And it's not impossible, but you can't start off being a single mom or, or a young sister. And then now you're trying to teach people because you're centered against the Lord. You're doing all matter of madness because you don't know anything. Be still. Learn the word first. Like that brother shot nine times. He needs to be still and get help. He can't, he can't be doing anything else right now. Just like you, you can't be doing anything else right now. Brother, that's just starting to learn the scriptures or a few months into the scriptures. How, what do you know to be able to teach anybody anything? Nothing. There's a trillion things to learn. You just started learning 45. You better do those and you better confirm that you're not following men in those 45 things. You better learn and do them so that you can be like Ecclesiastes 19 and 24, be that, that one with little understanding but fears the Lord. Rather than you got little understanding, now you're trying to be a bishop and teach. A bishop, again, is a teacher. When we read in the scripture, I was going to get it, but, you know, with time, we'll have to just quote it. Um, 1 Timothy 3, verse 4 down to verse 7, it talks about among the many characteristics that a teacher has to possess in order to have the Lord's Spirit and be a true teacher. That's the proof that they have the Lord's Spirit objectively. And when they examine themselves, like, okay, yeah, the Lord is with me, and this is not my imagination. Not because you know you're Israelites, the Lord is with you. Just not because the sun came up today, the Lord is with you. So you have to start actually seeing what the scriptures say and learning them and doing them. So now you have a young brother that is learning the scriptures. He has to what? Slow down. Everything you learn, we are responsible for, you have to do. Well, there's learning traditions of men. Why? Because they don't have to change. They could start yesterday and be in a camp tomorrow. Like that's 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 the warped way our people are still disobeying the most high in these last times by still not doing his word, even though all they're doing is quoting him or talking about the Bible and then not doing it. And they themselves not truly knowing it. So slow down, fam. Slow down. We're in the last times. Let's finish up here. This is uh, um, verse 39 and verse 40 in Matthew chapter 22. So it says, And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So loving the Most High, loving God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind is the first and great commandment. The second great commandment is just like the first, thou shalt love thy neighbors thyself. So as we see, love is an integral and pivotal and most important part of worshiping the Most High, yet our Israelite brothers never talk about it. 
Israelite groups never talk about it. Why? Because they have no love. Because Christ said in John 13, verse 35, by this shall all men know you are my disciples if you have love one to another. If we're not loving our brothers, not only those among us, but especially our people that are lost sheep and lost by sharing truth with the with the effort and with the desire for them to get well and get better and start to serve the most high in Christ too. Not hating them, not putting them down just to put them down because we feel that we're better. Hell no. But we hate to see our people down. So that's why we speak to them. Yet we have to speak to them with true love. True brothers. All right. So just to finish up here, let's get on Romans 13 real quick. Romans 13 and um, verse three. I'm sorry. Romans 13 and verse eight. And then we'll pause. Most high one. Because, again, love isn't. I love you, brother. See, I love my people. Yo, man, see, I love being black. You know, yes, do love being black. But we have to learn that we're Israelites. Okay? And the problem is, is that our people stop there. They learn we're Israelites, the Bible's true, and then they pause, not realizing that there's more that we have to add to knowing that we're Israelites. There's more we have to see. And this is... um because true love isn't, it's not just talking about love, it's showing it in word and deed. It's having patience. It's not being quick to be angry with our people, even when they're provoking, even when they're aggravating, not being real quick to hate them or real quick to meet them with rudeness. They're rude, you're going to be rude. Like we, we have to at times overlook what the blind of our people do. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is to actually be applying the commandments, is to actually be growing in the keeping of the commandments. And I'm not talking about not eating pork commandments. I'm not talking about women not wearing pants commandments, even though those are commandments. Those are least commandments. Because the main commandment deals with what? Having our mind right with the Lord, setting our heart aright, doing what's required biblically which is what our people don't do, whether they have the Bible or whether they don't have the Bible. That's why we not only need to have Bibles, but we need to study the Bible diligently and apply what it says diligently as we learn. Romans 13, verse 8. Oh, no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. So the Lord is showing us that don't owe a brother or a person money. You owe them money, pay them back. They disappeared or something, or why you owe them money? Put some money to the side. So you bump into them, hey, brother, let me get your number. Hey, sister, let me get your number because I have some funds for you. I didn't forget that loan you gave me. You moved away or you disappeared. I don't know what happened or you caught a case. I don't know what happened but pay them back. Be a man of your word and a woman of your word. Be owing your people money and especially don't be owing them love. Don't be owing them something that they need, whether it's your children, whether it's your parents that you owe them respect and honor, even if they weren't good parents. It's not our place to disrespect our parents. Let every other fool and every other person that's lost in the world do that and they pay for those sins. Because they have horrible kids of their own that disrespect them. You're not going to disrespect your parents and walk off into the sunset with your kids respecting and loving you. It's not going to happen. Guaranteed. So the better that you deal with your parents, the Lord's going to have mercy and guide you with your children and have them respect you. Keep the demons from controlling your children. This is real, fam. All right. So verse 9 in Romans 13 chapter, it says, for this... So, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Because you love another and you fulfill the law, what works? What's going to happen? For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. So, to have true love, you can't sleep with your brother's girl. You can't fantasize about your brother's girl. 
you can't do evil. You can't you can't do anything that would exhibit desire towards your brother's girl, whether it's flirting, whatever it is. Because if you do that, now you're showing hatred to your brother. Well, that's your cousin. What's well, a guy that's at the club with you tonight that you don't know? Whoever it is, you can't show that hatred. And it's the definition of not having love if you're committing adultery. As a wife to your husband, as a girlfriend to your man, or as a brother that don't even know the dude, you're showing hatred to that dude if you're dealing with his woman. Period. Can't do it and have love. This is real. So again, to have love, that's what we owe one another. I owe a brother not to try to sleep with his woman. You owe a brother not to try to sleep with his woman. As a woman, you owe your boyfriend or your man or the guy you're seeing to not deal with any other men. You don't get to do what you want. Oh, I'm going to choose. I'm a, I got me a few men because none of these men are no good. So I'm going to get me a few and figure out which of them is good. And No, then you're a harlot. You're a wicked woman to do that. Stop being a wicked woman, sisters. So the Lord can bless you with a good man rather than you continuing in sin, thinking you're going to find what you will never find. You'll only find heartache and problems and punishments. It says, thou shalt not kill. Meaning we can't murder someone. If you have murder, that confirms you don't have love. How are you, how you going to say you love someone? I love my kids. And then you murder someone else's kid. That makes no sense. But that's the senseless way our people live today. That's why we have to renew our mind as commanded. We have to be born again as commanded. We have to repent as commanded. We have to show love as commanded, even though most of the brothers and people in Israel, they never speak about love as if the Bible doesn't speak about it when the Bible only speaks about it. So that's why it's time to wake up, fam. All right. It says, thou shalt not steal. So if you carjacking, you stealing someone's money, you stealing someone's phone, you swindling them out of money. That's a definition of hate, not have love. It says, thou shalt not be a false witness. If you're lying, you teaching lunar Sabbaths, you teaching things against the scriptures, you're lying. You're bearing false witness. You're showing hatred to the people that you're trying to teach and that you claim you have love for. This is not a game, fam. That's why you can't just open a Bible and start trying to teach it. Oh, we're Israelites. Hey, but you know, we're Israel. You know, you got to keep the Sabbath. You, know, you need to slow your butt down. You need to be still. You need to learn to have an excellent spirit and how to be quiet, how to be still, how to stop being a busybody, how to stop letting demons control your thoughts and your movements because you don't take time to think or examine anything. Let's continue. It says, thou shalt not covet. Covet is sinful desires, wicked desires. That's why, um, what is it? The 10th of the 10 commandments in Exodus chapter 20, verse 17 says, thou shalt not covet um, thy neighbor's house, thy neighbor's wife, thy neighbor's ox. You, anything that your brother has, you can't wickedly desire it to be your own. Because then you'll, those wicked thoughts, which don't have love for the Lord in them, is what? Going to do anything, including murder that person. You're going to lie. You're going to do any commandment and break any commandment to get something that belongs to someone else. Because that's a hateful, wicked spirit that wants what someone else has. Or wants his woman. Or wants what's his You're supposed to be happy for your brother if they have a beautiful woman or a good woman or something beneficial in their life so you have to start learning you have to stop being a hater okay you have to truly love the lord and truly love your brother let's continue it says and if there be any other commandment it is briefly comprehended in this saying so there's hundreds of other commandments so paul isn't going to rewrite all the commandments he brought out a few, and he's going to sum them up in this. He said, any other commandment that I didn't bring out is comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So the scriptures show us why loving our neighbor is important, because 
we're not going to be doing evil or breaking any commandments when we deal with our neighbor, whether they are a brother that we know or a brother that we saw for the first time or a brother that steps in our shoes and looks at us threateningly or, or funny or is aggravating. We're going to say, no, that's my brother. He's, you know, he's having a bad life and a bad day. Um, I'll tell him, excuse me. Hey, brother, excuse me, man. Didn't see you there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know what, man? My bad, man. I think I'm just rushing, man. My bad, my bad. Excuse me, excuse me. That's what happens because our people, they don't get shown love, even in quick interactions, like trying to enter a door and another person leaving or something like that. They're, they're, they're in war. They're in our war state of mind. They're getting it from every side, so they don't have any peace. They're like, they're, they're, they're like jacked up. And like, when I say jacked up, meaning like they're, they're like um, hyper alert, hyper, hyper like watchful, and yet they're not seeing everything. Because it's like someone, when, when, when gunshots are going around, no one's comfortable. Our people live in violence and evil, so we're not comfortable at any time. So the ones of our people, especially that don't know the scriptures, they're only in that fight state of mind. That's why they argue so quick. That's why they're ready to bite and hit and pull hair and they're ready to fight. What? Ready, ready, ready to stand up in public anywhere, ready to fight. When they should fight, they don't, but we'll come back to that. So by learning the scriptures, we know, hey, my brother's not my enemy. Even if he portrays himself as my enemy, I can't, I can't do that dance with him. Now, if he's coming trying to physically attack me without cause or something like that, then I'm going to defend myself. No question. But I'm not going to beat him to death. I'm going to, you know, try to be calm because I understand that my brothers and my people are destroyed. My sisters are destroyed. So am I going to now, like, render evil for evil every time they say something rude and insulting to me, give them something back? I ain't no punk. You ain't going to talk to me that way. Nah, we, we all punks. White man punks us. We're, we're destroyed. So we better be the servants of the Lord so we can understand how to dwell in peace in a world that's against us and in a punishment that's arriving to its conclusion in the end of these last days. We're in the last days now. Christ is real and Christ is going to come back and he's going to bring judgment. He's going to save those of us that apply the scriptures and obey his word and he's going to destroy those that don't, plain and simple. So it's time to wake up, fam, and it's time to understand these scriptures. Because we're reading a very powerful and important scripture. This is the definition of loving thy neighbors thyself. It means applying the commandments with our wife, sisters with your husbands, brothers and sisters with your children, brothers and sisters with your parents, with strangers, with brothers and sisters you don't know in the street or at work, we have to we have to be we have to deal righteously with our people, which is what we don't do. We deal righteously with we deal we deal respectfully with the white man after all they've done to us. What we 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 still respect them, but with our own people who suffer like we do, we're we're ready to dig their eyeball out. So we have to stop being crabs in a barrel and have to start worshiping the most high. And like the Lord said, loving our neighbors ourselves. Let's continue. Romans 13, verse 10. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Powerful. So because love doesn't do something bad or hurtful, to the person that love is being given to that's why it's fulfilling the law not because i say i love you so now i'm doing the law so i don't have to do the law because the law is done away with no get away from these devil doctrines and liars in these religions and worship the most high in spirit and truth beloved brothers and sisters so we're going to end with this and pause there's many more precepts but a little bit of milk and a little bit of honey daily Get these scriptures, learn and do them. Okay, so this is Luke 6 32, and it says, For if we love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. So 
what Christ is telling us here, and just like all these different scriptures just dealing with love show us, is that we have to love in word and deed. And if I just love my, you know, my cousins that love me, or if I just love my brother that loves me, or if I just love uh, my sister that loves me, um, what am I doing better than gang members that murder people that are rival gang members or victims, yet they'll look out for their brother. They'll steal from somebody's house and come back, hey, brother, yeah, man, hey, I know you like gold, man, so hey, take this this gold uh, this gold bracelet over here or something like that. Hey, thanks, chief. Yo, good looking out, baby. Yeah, man, all right, yo. So our people, that's why it's so important when we deal with wisdom, when we deal with truth, that we must, we must, we must, we must have true love, which is the applying of the commands. And when we love the Lord, the scriptures specifically let us know that we have to love him with all our mind. Because if we don't love him with all our mind, you, this is a battle that's a long race. This is a long battle. This is life. Life is a battle. And in our lives, in this life, we have to obey the Most High's word, which contains commandments which is also Christ, who is the word of the Most High and is the Bible. Pause and rewind what was just said. John 1 and 14, Psalms 40, verse 7. Many scriptures say this. So by us applying the commandments, our nature is going to change because our soul and our mind is going to change. And that's the only way we can actually worship the Most High. That's the only way we'll have the actual humility as his true children to obey our father's word, which is the Bible, and which is the true biblical Jesus Christ. Our right, fam, holy hugs, heavenly father, through our beloved Messiah Christ, bless you all and be strong and endure to the end. And remember, stay in the Bible only, always. Peace.